everyone. Welcome. It is seven o'clock and we're going to go ahead and get started with the program. I'm Katie Becker and I am going to be uh, your host for this evening. Before I get started, there's a few uh, housekeeping items that I'd like to mention. Uh, please keep microphones muted. Uh, this will help reduce um, background noise and feedback so we're able to hear our host uh, clearly. After Bobby Joe finishes her presentation, we'll have time for questions. Uh, at that time, you can unmute yourself, feel, feel free to ask questions or use the chat box to add your questions. And then I will use, or I will read your questions on your behalf. If anyone has any technical difficulties, please call 605-367-8147. And we'd be glad to help you. And I'm going to go ahead and post that number in the chat as well for your reference. This program is being recorded. Uh, once the recording is ready, I will go ahead and send out an email with a link to the recording. Now I would like to welcome our presenter. Bobby Joe Horstead is the owner and operator of Nam Nam Gardens and Master Gardener Intern. Uh, she's here to teach us about native flowers and grasses and the importance of soil health and wildlife. You can find out more about Bobby and Nam Nam Gardens by visiting her website, www.namnamgardens.com. And I will also add that to the chat section for your reference. And now I will turn over the program to Bobby Joe, and let's give her a warm virtual welcome. Welcome, Bobby. Thank you so much, Katie, for having me, and thank you to Siouxland Libraries for hosting such amazing classes. Um, I've been a part of a few, and I'm really grateful for the platform and the opportunity to teach others and to learn uh, so many amazing things, so thank you. Um, as was mentioned, I own a farm just south of Sioux Falls. Um, I got into uh, learning and studying native plants and flowers and grasses being out here and seeing how beneficial they were to my farm and the wildlife on my farm, including the um, chickens. They're obviously not wild, the chickens that I raise, but it's beneficial to um, everything really and i'm so excited to share a short presentation via powerpoint with you and after that i would love to have a really great discussion um, one thing i love about teaching classes is i learn more from folks that are participating in them than i do going in and i really love doing that so i really mu very much look forward to learning with you and let's get started with that powerpoint Can you guys see that? Let's see, there we go. I'm not very good at all of the technology stuff, so please bear with me. <laughs> it's a little bit rough for me sometimes. So let me know when you can see that. You guys see that okay? Thank you. Is that Arlene shaking your head? I see you. Hi, it's so good to see you. All right, so all of the pictures in my slideshow are from around my farm. I am just south of Sioux Falls. And when we moved out here a few years ago, there was a lot of really amazing wildlife uh, and really great grasses and plants. And we have just expanded that over the years. So today we'll be talking about native grasses and flowers in South Dakota. What are native grasses and flowers? Uh, native flora, I'll call it that just to shorten it up, is anything that grows naturally in our area. Uh, the benefits of native flora, they provide food and habitat for native pollinators, as well as supporting the soil. Areas with native flora have diverse ecosystems that are naturally maintained and better for the environment as a whole. So what I mean by that is um, if you have a wildlife area that has native grasses and flowers, you're going to have more 
pollinators. You will have more native animals in that area, deer, foxes, butterflies, everything else like that. Um, native grasses also support healthy waterways. We know that you have to water less when you have native grasses and flowers and when you have native grasses and flowers around streams they're able to filter out a lot of the icky stuff that comes from fields so that's pretty amazing um, and they also you know they don't need the irrigation that non-native flora require planting native perennials allows a once and done planting with grasses and flowers coming back year after year I am uh, kind of a lazy farmer and gardener. I like planting perennials and having something come back every year that I'm not having to replant. I do a lot of annuals like tomatoes and peppers, but having something come back every year, that's really amazing to me and it's kind of nice. Uh, they also look really beautiful. Uh, we'll start off with native grasses. There are so many, it would be hard to list them all. So I just pulled up a few of the most popular in our area. Uh, blue stem, they're native. there are various varieties of this. A lot of folks try their hardest to get rid of them. Um, we are kind of taught that a lot of the native grasses and flowers that we have are weeds and are, are noxious to our farming system. Um, but they're really kind of cool. And we're getting back to planting native, which is really amazing for all of us. Uh, buffalo grass, it's kind of regular grass. Uh, you'll see it up here. And I say it's all grown up because it's just not mowed down grass. It's pretty amazing. Uh, cord grass, sweet grass, it's a very popular grass. Switch grass, wheat grass, which is over here. You can see where my cursor is at. Uh, wild rye and foxtail over here. I, um, I think it's so fuzzy and soft. It's so fun to play with. And then you have Indian grass over here around our pond. Not only are they beautiful and great habitats for animals, large and small, but native grasses also benefit the soil with their deep reaching root systems that replenish nutrients in the soil and help reduce soil erosion. I think that most people are aware of the harm that has been done to our soil, our topsoil, by depleting those natural flora that we have in our area. Um, our agricultural system is one that just wipes everything out and plants things that are not native to our area or not adapted to our area. And so we lose a lot of the topsoil, you know, the dust bowl, everything like that was man-made and we're still suffering consequences from that. So the more we plant native grasses and flowers, the better our soil is. We get a lot of nutrients back into the soil and a lot of this, the root systems go from something like this to really, really deep. And that's really great for not only the soil, but the whole ecosystem around it. We want the animals that would naturally be in that area to be able to thrive in every, any given area. So it's really great to be able to plant a grass like that and see such great things happen from it. Flowers. There are so many amazing native flowers in South Dakota. We see them as weeds most commonly. Um, so it's kind of hard to get away from that thinking. But look at how beautiful some of them are. The goldenrod up here, black-eyed Susan down here. They look a lot like sunflowers. We do have native sunflowers in our area. Sunflowers are native to North America. But look at these sunflowers, these black-eyed Susans down here. There are many type of asters. They're little white flowers and they come in, well, they come in all different kinds of colors. Uh, Coreopsis, I can never say that correctly. So if somebody else can say that better, I would love you to join in on that down here and common milkweed. There are a lot of different types of milkweed and we'll get to that in a little bit because you guys were given some milkweed in the packets that you picked up. Um, some other really great native flowers are blazing star button star um, columbines. I didn't know that those were native until the last two years so that was amazing. Cone flowers. There's a few different types of cone flower. I believe that you guys were given purple cone flower which is also called echinacea. Um, hyssop, uh, cask flower, our state plant, it's our state flower, it's very beautiful. And clover, sage, and like I said, sunflowers. And the reason that native flowers are important is because we have native pollinators that benefit off of those flowers. And there are many different kinds of pollinators, um, such as bees. 
I also didn't know until recently that there are over two, 400 types of native bees in South Dakota. I was only really aware of honeybees in South Dakota and maybe some other small bee. But we have over 400 types of bees in our state. Um, other pollinators are moths, other types of butterflies other than monarchs. Bats are a pollinator. There are birds and other insects that are all benefited from having native flowers planted in our area. Um, other than pollinators, all animals benefit from a healthy ecosystem created by having native flora. Uh, native pollinators help pollinate the trees, a lot of our fruit trees, um, you know, deer, rabbits, and other herbivores eat and live in those flowers and grasses. Um, another critter that benefits from native flora are people. Uh, planting native grasses and flowers not only increases the aesthetics of our homes, personally I believe that it's prettier to have those native flowers uh, in public green spaces and yards, but also creates easy gardens. Like I talked about before, having a perennial garden that is native, you get a one and done type system. You don't have to water it. Um, if you can get over the whole weed idea, you don't have weeding to do. And they're just really beautiful. Um, adding native perennials to your vegetable garden also attracts pollinators to your annual, annual vegetables and fruits. I add annual vegetables um, in with my perennials in my garden space and I'm able to see a whole host of pollinators in my garden. Whereas when I didn't do that, I didn't see as many of those native pollinators in there. So it's beneficial in so many ways. I'm also not having to water as much which is very cool because that root system helps keep the water maintained in there. And it's really amazing and keeping out some of those more noxious weeds that I don't want. Um, another really cool thing about native plants and flowers is that they have been used medicinally and as food for a very, very, very long time. I love the idea of foraging and using plants as medicine and food. And there's really great books out there to learn more about that. I won't get into that because I could talk all day about it, so we'll go on. Um, I will talk about some of what we've got here. So down here in the left-hand corner, this is swamp milkweed or common milkweed and a monarch caterpillar on it. Um, on the purse lane next to it, I forget what kind of moth this beautiful caterpillar turns into. It's nice on purslane. It's really bad for tomatoes, so it's not the best to find on your tomatoes, but it was there, so I kind of loved on it either way. Next to it, look at this bee, look at that beautiful bumblebee. And over here, that pollen sac on the bergamot, and this is, um, I forget what that's called, milkweed. It's a butterfly weed up there in the upper right. So some great pollinators and pollinating plants, pollinator plants, just love them. Um, so native plants are a great addition to any lawn and are a huge benefit to annual gardens. As I said, I have them around in my vegetables. Um, I also have them just all over our yard and we have free range chickens. So we don't spray for weeds in our yard because I don't want my chickens getting herbicides or pesticides or anything like that and it's pretty awesome. We have some areas that we're not mowing because we have um, flowers that are overtaking the grass that we don't want as tall to keep mosquitoes out and one thing that I find very fascinating is two of our most prominent and um, most spread if that's the right way to put that flowers or weeds are dandelions and white clover and they're not even native to North America. They were introduced to our area by European settlers. They are beneficial still but they are not native. They were introduced around the 1600s so that's kind of fascinating to me. They have adapted very well to our system and our pollinators have adapted to having them here so it's not the worst thing in the world to have them even if they're not native. Um, most of you I'm sure picked up your packets from the library with the seeds and the flowers that you were given are the purple cone flower up here on the top. Um, as I said before, it's also called echinacea and it's used medicinally a lot and they're just so beautiful. Um, the butterflies of, there are a few different butterflies that benefit greatly off of them. 
The second is the, uh, the milkweed down here, the butterfly weed. So not only are they great for butterflies, they're also great for bees. And they are so beautiful. It's a bushy plant. They can get pretty tall. They're just amazing and so beautiful. So there are a couple ways that you can plant them. I always like planting things early to give them a head start and know that they're going to survive. Well, hope that they survive when I transplant them. So you can take your seeds now and start them indoors and keep them warm. And once it's uh, past frost date, which is, I believe, the 22nd, I think. Um, and then once that is over, you can plant your stuff outside. You can directly sow them outside. But for me, I like the, um, I like knowing that I have a little plant going out. They just have a little bit better chance of surviving. So I hope you have fun planting those. And if some of you didn't get any of those, let us know and we'll get you whatever packet you did not get. I've got some available at my farm. So we'll get, make sure that you are taken care of. Um, so I, like I said, my presentation was very small. Um, oops, I don't know what I did. Oh, back here. Pardon me. Uh, resource, resources to learn more. You'll have to pardon me. I'm very bad at this. There are so many amazing local resources that you can go to to learn more about all of this. And um, I've got a pretty big list here, so I'll, I can I think I'll skip going through them. Um, I will highlight a few. Uh, one that's really exciting for me is Common Roots Seeds. My friend Rachel Somm started a seed library here in Sioux Falls, and she is, she'll be located at the Mission downtown, and she will have seeds available, and they're at no cost. You just go down, rummage through the seeds, figure out what you need. If you want to donate any, if you are done planting, you can bring them down to her, and it's a great resource for any gardener, and she'll have a lot of local seeds available to her. One of my favorite places to get local seeds and, and plants that are native to our area is Prairie Moon Nursery out of Minnesota. They specialize in those native um, plants and they're really knowledgeable about what can go where because there are so many plants that do well here, but they may not be native to us. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not bashing anything that's from, you know, not from our area, but it's pretty beneficial. Um, Dakota's seeds Best Seed, they're a really great seed company. I will have seeds, uh, seedlings started out at my farm in a couple of weeks for sale. Uh, lots of native flowers and herbs um, for sale. One fun thing is if you don't have space to grow your own garden, and if you don't have a lawn, there are a lot of great places to go and see those things around Sioux Falls. And um, I believe that most of them are free. The Mary Jo Arboretum between Sioux Falls and Brandon is a really beautiful space. If you haven't been there yet, take the time to go out there and just walk around and absorb all of the beauty out there. Everyone that's out there is so eager and willing to answer any questions you have, and it's just a really beautiful space. Augustana University has a native grass and flower area that they are developing, and it looks great. And they are going to continue developing that uh, and I'm really excited for them. It was a student-led initiative, which is very cool. USF has an absolutely gorgeous butterfly garden on campus. And it's almost like walking into a dream to me. I know that sounds super cheesy, but it's just, it's really beautiful. And a lot of time was spent planning it out and planting it and maintaining it. Uh, another really beautiful space I love is Mercury Gardens in Brookings. There's so much to do in Brookings. And it's one of those things that I highly suggest everybody take the trip to do. Um, the Master Gardeners have a pollinator garden near the Ark of Dreams in downtown Sioux Falls, which is really, really amazing. It's so beautiful. Oops, I don't know what I did. Uh, resources to learn more and get involved. Our libraries, of course, have really great books on uh, designing gardens with native pollinating plants, and um, I would go to your conservation offices. The two that are closest to me are the Minnehaha and Lincoln County Conservation Offices. They have really great sales in the spring, 
and the SCSU Extension Office, which includes the Master Gardener Extension. Uh, really great programs, really great people willing to help with any questions you have. Um, yeah, and Project Food Forest is another one that is really great at helping people plan and answer those questions about how to plant your stuff, because that can be very intimidating sometimes. Um, now that I, my presentation is done, but I wanted to go through and scroll through some more native flowers, because it would be impossible for me to put all of them on my presentation, and all of the pictures that I showed you were my own photos. So this is from the Minnehaha Conservation District, and these are just some really great native flowers that you probably have seen that you can have in your own yard. And they're just so beautiful, you guys. I just love them. Asters are really, really beautiful. Um, yeah, bergamot, black-eyed Susan, like I said before. Blazing star, I had a picture of that a, a butterfly, not a butterfly, sorry, a bee on one earlier. So I, the coneflower, I'm going to turn this over for questions now. I really like the conversation parts of presentations. So let's figure that out. Stop sharing. I saw a lot of really great questions pop up. I'm sorry I wasn't able to read them all right away. So I know I kind of blew through that PowerPoint. I talked a little fast. I'm always a little nervous when I'm teaching. So we can go back and I'd love to answer all these great questions that I saw pop up. Yes, I did see um, several uh, questions come up in the chat and um, also free, feel free at this point to go ahead and unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. Um, it looks like we had a question um, about Prairie Moon Nursery and where's that located? Oh, I do not exactly remember where they are located. Let me look that up quick. I always order them online. Bobby? Yes. This is Deb Johnson. Hey, Deb. Nice to see you. kind to see you. Hello. <laughs> they, they are located in Winona, Minnesota. Thank you, Deb. Yep, because I use them also. They are so amazing. So Deb is a master gardener around our area. Sorry to call you out, Deb, but she is very knowledgeable and somebody I look to quite a bit for nurse, like anything when it comes to garden and planting. So thank you so much, Deb. You're welcome. Great presentation. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we also had um, a question about places where you can get free seeds. And um, I don't know if you have um, a list, Bobby, that you could possibly send me that I could send out an email, uh, but someone was interested in knowing um, places where you can get free seeds that are local. Yeah, so the one place that we have that is local for free seeds, um, Master Gardeners and um, DRA Homegrown Chapter has a seed swap every spring, but every day you can go to Common. Oh, I don't remember what she's called now. Sorry, my friend Rachel has started a seed bank in Sioux Falls. She will be at the Mission, and the seed saving library or seed bank is called Common Roots Seeds, and I'm going to put that in the chat for you. You can look her up online. She's on Facebook and Instagram. And her name is Rachel Salm. And she has a really great, yep, at the Union Gospel Mission. Thank you, Betty. Um, and so you can go in there and she has a really great selection of seeds that you can get for free. And if you have any extra seeds that you wanna donate, she's a really great resource to be able to do that all year. I know that I always, um, have some extras, so she'll be getting quite a lot from myself and my farm. So uh, it's a really great resource, and I'm really excited about everything that she's doing. That's wonderful. That is really good to know. Uh, good information. And uh, it looks like we have another question about um, natives that are tolerant of uh, partial to full shade. Uh, if you have any mm -hmm. tips on those. Yes. Many of them should be. Um, a lot of them will say that they need full sun, but 
Um, I have not run into anything that hasn't been tolerant of all types of soil. South Dakota goes from sandy to really muddy, um, you know, shade and everything else. So um, I say all of it really. <laughs> there are some flowers that I wouldn't really put in a shady area. Um, some of your milkweed isn't going to do as well, but grasses should do pretty well. Blue grasses or blue stem grass is really great in shade. And it's very beautiful. It's got a blue tint to it. Most of them do and has the name and they're really great in the shade. So Wonderful. Um, I just see a post here asking if our talk is recorded. And yes, um, their presentation tonight is being recorded. And um, once the recording is finished, I will go ahead, go ahead and send out um, an email with a link to that recording um, for everybody here. So we'll have that as a recording here and get that out to you over email. I am seeing from Francis, I recently found out that uh, we can do native grasses instead of a traditional lawn. You have a neighbor who is big on his traditional lawn. How can I plant native grasses while making sure I don't impose on his lawn? I just worry if I start native plants too close to our property line. That's a really great question and one that a lot of people run into. I would put a buffer between your lawn and his if you're able to. Um, uh, you, know, you could do a bush of some sort so you're not having your stuff sprayed. And what I mean by bush, you could do like a butterfly weed that's not going to spread as much to your neighbor's lawn. Um, we don't spray anything. So when we were in Sioux Falls, our neighbors were not always super excited about that because it does spread. But if you're staying away from things like dandelions and you have ground cover of like purple clover and sedum, and you can do white clover, which is not native to South Dakota, but it's a really great ground cover. Uh, creeping thyme is another that you could do um, to kind of get rid of your traditional grasses and then pop in those beautiful plants like coneflower um, inside of that space. And it'll take a while to build up that ecosystem and make it be beautiful and flourish, but um, yeah, and hope that he just doesn't spray your beautiful plants. And hopefully that helps and hopefully I answered that question okay and got some answers there. Okay, it looks like another question here uh, for a suggestion for grow lights now that we have planted our seeds and the weather outside is cold. I could just use the traditional grow lights. If you have a nice sunny windowsill, you can do that. Um, if not, they're just like the box grow lights that you can get at Menards. And I believe it's Menards and I'm sure the other stores have them as well. Um, I have really great luck with just really like the long tube, I think they're LED lights or fluorescent, fluorescent lights, excuse me. But even if a sunny windowsill, as long as they're kept warm and away from drafts, should really be great at sprouting your seeds and getting those babies growing for you. Gardening doesn't need to be too fancy or expensive and sometimes simple is best. So it's exciting that you guys have these seeds to start. It always makes me so happy. You're so welcome. Okay, and then I think, did we have another question here too? Oh, I'm wondering, Bobby, and I guess if anybody um, has any experience with purple dead, is it nettle as a ground cover? I don't have experience with that as a ground cover. I use nettle, but not as a ground cover. So if anybody else has experience with that, please chime in. That's a really great question. Okay, another question here. Are um, there some good native plants for uh, around the base of a tree? Uh, native plants for around the base of a tree. I do a lot of grasses around tree bases and you could do flowers around that. Most tree guilds are pretty safe um, and a lot of native grasses and plants are going to replenish nutrients back into the soil. I'd be a little bit more cautious if you're doing it around fruit trees. Look more into it for specific fruit trees if you're thinking for that uh, or, you know, baby plants. But it's really nice to have flowers at the base of a tree so you're not having to worry about mowing just around the trunk of your tree. I see a lot of folks do a really great 
uh, landscaping blocks around and then plants things at the base. But any native stuff around the base of your tree should be really great and not invasive or harmful to the tree as long as it's mature enough. Great. Um, so I do have, I have a question for you too, Bobby. Um, yes. So I was wondering, so on your website, you mentioned um, that you developed an aquaponic system for outdoor and indoor. So I, I'm wondering, I'm not familiar with what that is. Wondering if you can explain um, the aquaponic system and how it works. Yes, so aquaponics is the combination of hydroponics, which is growing in water and using fish. So we have a large, you have a large fish tank that is completely closed off and that has a pump that takes water from the fish and pumps it into a trough system on which the plants float in, um, we have like a, it's a styrofoam raft type thing. So the roots of these plants go down into the water and the water is fertilized by the fish poo. Sounds really gross, but it's really great. <laughs> and then it is filtered through the, roots of the plants and it goes back into the fish tank. So it's a really great system. It's an enclosed loop where the plants are kept safe from outside critters. We still have some critters inside of our greenhouse, which is totally natural. If there's not things eating your plants naturally, you shouldn't eat them either. We are no spray farm. So it's kind of, I know going into a garden or anything else, if you see a bug on your plants, you're like, ugh. But it's, it's a good thing, I promise. So that's, um, that's a really great thing. And the reason I love aquaponics is how sustainable it is for our system. We fill up our tank, we fill up our trough, the water goes through, and we're not having to worry about drought or watering it. And um, we've used an, a system outside, and we've used systems, various types of systems inside. The most recent one is in our greenhouse, which is geothermal year-round greenhouse. So we've been producing lettuce out of that system all year, including this past winter. So it's been pretty great. Um, yeah, aquaponics is a lot of fun. A lot of folks use hydroponics, which is the same idea without the fish. So one really great farm to check out for hydroponics is Happy Hydro. He's out of Pequana and he sells a lot of produce in our grocery stores, which is really awesome. Great, very interesting. Okay, uh, another question here for blue stem or other grasses. Do you plant those from seed? I do. Hi, Barb. I'm so glad you're here. It's fun seeing people I know here. Um, I do. You don't have to. I like planting things from seed. Blue stem does really great, just seeded. Like if you want a large area of it, you can get um, a lot of it and just throw it down, like kind of tamp it into the soil. I like starting things early just because I live on a farm with free range chickens. And for me, I feel like it's a little bit better guarantee that they're going to grow if they're from, you know, if they're a little baby plant. But you don't have to. The egg grows, blue stem grows really great, just seeded directly into the ground. Um, so thank you for being here. All right. Another question popped up is. Amaranth native to South Dakota. Amaranth, is that native to South Dakota? I don't believe so. I believe that Amaranth is native to Southern states. I grow it here. It's so beautiful. It's a tall, beautiful plant. If um, you're not familiar with it, I highly suggest looking it up. Um, it might be, I know it's found in Northern states, um, but I don't believe it's native to our area. It grows really, really well here though. And its root system is really beautiful. So, um, yeah, I love amaranth. It's really tall. It's got this really big head on it. It's red and use it for flour, like grind it up, and use it for flour and dye. So I use it for dye sometimes, taking the head of it off. And it's really beautiful, um, but not native to our area, I don't believe. I think that's a southern plant. Okay, uh, do all native plants spread easily or are invasive? A lot of native plants do spread very easily, just naturally. Um, there are some that will stay put to their little area, but most will seed themselves and spread. Um, and the term in, in invasive wise, um, it depends on who you ask and what they would see as being invasive. 
So if you wanted a garden of nothing but, you know, annuals or something like that, then they would definitely be invasive. Um, farmers in, you know, more traditional farming roles are definitely going to see those things as being invasive. So uh, be careful of some of the plants that you don't want them spreading in your garden and taking out other things, but they are very easily maintained just by pulling and um, splitting things if you don't want them growing too much. But like if coneflower and things like that, they're not just going to take over everything for you. Hello, Erin from Marlena. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Erin from, from me too. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so Bobby, you had mentioned um, vegetables also. And so I'm just curious as far as vegetables and produce, produce um, what is native to South Dakota? There are a lot of really great things that you can find in South Dakota. It would be more um, foraging stuff that you would find. A lot of what we have that would be native would be like wild. You would say wild, like parsnips and things like that. And um, a lot of stuff that you see in the fields are not native to our area, like corn. That's a southern um, plant and vegetable. Uh, fruits are a little bit different. We have a lot of really awesome native fruits. We have wild plums and things like that that are native to our area. And I'm not even as well versed on that, so I feel like I shouldn't be answering too much on that. But for foraging and things like that, you can find a lot of really great native plants that are edible. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not gonna answer more on that because I'm not sure. That's a really great question. <laughs> I should have looked that up before I thought of it. Doing this, it's a really great question. All right, and then, here comes another question. I have a full sun, uh, empty south facing space behind my house. It uh, gets super hot in that area and doesn't have much moisture. Any suggestions of what to plant before the weeds take over? I have a full sun, empty south facing space. Um, I would do something like creeping thyme. It's really beautiful. Um, purple clover would also be really great. It's kind of taller. Sedum is also a really great native thing that will spread and kind of cover everything. Um, if you're wanting to plant a garden there, Erin, are you looking at planting vegetables or flowers there? Or do you want it to be just kind of a blank space? Well, it's kind of a blank. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi there. Hi there. Well, it's we're kind of out in the country. It's super windy. Um, so it's kind of this just dirt area right now. The only thing that grows there right now is <laughs> weeds. Um, but I want to get ahead of that this year and plant something so that nothing takes over that space. It could be vegetables. It could be flowers. I was thinking a butterfly garden, but if it gets too hot in that area, I don't know. It, it's pretty close to the house. I don't want to overwater and like flood out my basement or ruin my siding or something like that so absolutely one beautiful thing about planting a native pollinator garden if you wanted to do a butterfly garden is they don't need the watering system that a lot of our um, introduced plants would need they thrive in the system um, that is drought flooding drought flooding in south dakota so a lot of them are going to be okay like we were talking about earlier uh, in some shade, there's not a lot of shade in South Dakota, but most of those grasses will do okay. And in your situation, it's very hot. Um, butterfly weed does great in heat and very little water. Um, and it's a very beautiful plant and it gets very bushy. So I don't know how big your space is, but that would be a really great option to start with. And it wouldn't, I've got some right up against my house that is really beautiful. It's got a really great reach to it and takes up a lot of space and I never have to water it and it's like the sun it beats on it constantly it's on the east side of my house with zero shade nothing else grows right there other than um, like violets and things like that and some mm -hmm. other flowers but really awesome so the butterfly weed the creeping thyme purple clover sedum okay. yeah um and if you wanted to try to tramp 
out, like trample out those grasses or those weeds. You could always do something like cardboard down to start out your garden and try to get rid of those weeds. I'm not a huge fan of like plastic landscaping stuff. It just, to me, it's kind of a pain in the butt to put down. Uh, it's really great, but cardboard will, um, it's not the worst thing for the environment. Um, right. So you can put that down pretty easily and that will go away after time. But you can put that down, water it, and then punch holes in it and put your plants in there that way oh, and do like a, a mulch idea. on top of it. So it's a very um, budget friendly and time friendly thing. I'm really terrible with uh, landscape staples. Those really big staples. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with those. Um, not my favorite thing. I, my hand hurts just thinking about them, like punching them into landscaping cloths. So cardboard is a really friendly way to get rid of weeds in an area that you want to plant in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And that will an also answer Joe's question about how to remove grass from areas you want to plant in native flowers. You can plant uh, your native flowers in there, Joe, but um, what I've done is put down the cardboard and punch the holes in them. Just look at some grass through that where the holes are at in the cardboard, but it's just an easier way for me I think, to kind of start those native flower beds. Uh, next question, are many master gardeners here, uh, part of community garden program, um, can we use this cardboard technique um, on our plots? Deb and Arlene, can you guys answer that question? I'm not sure. If Arlene is still on. Deb, I see you. Sorry to call you out again. I'm the one that asked the question, so if if not, I can just follow up with my specific master gardener on it. But all right, Sarah, and I can follow up too. Um, if you want to message me your email and I will send that message on to them. Um, okay. I'm part of the master partner gardeners program, but I'm not quite sure if you can use the gar cardboard in there or not. So we'll make sure that that answer that gets answered. That's yeah, a really great question. Technique if we can. Yeah. Okay, so Sarah, I will make sure. All right. Uh, are there any other questions for Bobby Joe? Well, we've covered a, a lot of ground already here. Um, and okay, if uh, there's no other questions, I um, want to mention that if uh, you did not receive your um, flower kit, to um, go ahead and email me, uh, Kay Becker at Sioux Falls dot org or um you can call the kaylee library 367-8144 and i'll be sure to get a flower kit uh sent out to you and let's see we had um okay thank you coming in um and then again just to mention that uh the program is being recorded and so uh, once the recording is ready you will be getting an email um from me with a recording through that link. So, um, all right. Well, thank you much Bobby, for all the great information. This was just really um, good and good timing now that we're all kind of, you know, starting to get ready to get planting here. So. It's my pleasure. I really love um, flowers and I love lazy gardening. So if we can all have beautiful lawns that we don't have to worry about planting over and over again and not watering, I think that's pretty awesome. So it's my pleasure being here and thank you all for being here and thank you for hosting. I'm so excited. Great. Yes. Uh, thank you. And it looks like uh, there was a question about a flower packet. So yes, again, um, if you didn't receive your flower packet, um, give the library a call um, or you can email me and we'll make sure everybody gets their kit. So, um, all right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us and thank you again, Bobby. Thank you so much, Katie. And thank you everyone for being here. I hope you all have a wonderful night and you can 
um, message me on my Facebook page or get a hold of the Master Gardeners or the library for any questions you have. These were all really great questions, so it's been really awesome. Thanks, everybody, and have a great night. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thank you.